So here on Thursday, one of the other pieces that we look at in these Easter liturgies as we move into Easter is this always this change of colors and flowers. Those are the two pieces that come to mind today. And colors are something, whenever you have um, the liturgies, we walk through Christ's life all year. This is what we do. We walk step by step from the beginning to the end, uh, from everything from his birth, preparing for that in Advent, all the way through the times of his life, an ordinary time, into the Lenten time of preparation for Passover, and then his passion, death, and resurrection, and into glory. We walk through all that. And so as we are a people of the incarnation of creation, as you can see behind me, all these uh, different colors, they begin to distinguish. They distinguish one thing from another. Um, different colors let you know what different things are. And so in creation as well, we use that in the liturgy. So as the times of his life change, so the colors change in the church. So the use of all these different things in the church will change. Sometimes we sing differently. Sometimes we use different colors. Sometimes we have candles or incense. Sometimes we chant. Sometimes we don't. To call to mind the differences in different times. So the colors as we move in from, as you know, the violet or purple, we now have, what is it? White. So we move from the red of Good Friday into the white of Easter. And so always pay attention to the colors when they change. White is something in general, it's a time of celebration. When you see white, you know we're about to celebrate something. If you see red, you know blood has been spilled. If you see green, we're in ordinary time, we're moving along. If you see purple, it's time of penance. We're preparing for something, the purple preparation. But white tells you it's a celebration time. And so that's where we're in now. Now white leads into other things flowers. So with flowers in Easter time, what do you think of? Especially nowadays, what do you think of? Lilies. Lilies, the Easter lily, as we would call it. Interestingly enough, the lily was often associated back in the beginning with Mary and the Annunciation. So the, the different, like a veneral bead, for example, he says, you know, the petals represented her her virginal body and the golden anthem in the middle, the anther was the, of her her uh, special soul. Um, some talk about, you know, that it's just, it's a general springtime flower that would have been out in this time. Uh, oftentimes it's associated with chastity and purity and innocence. Um, a lot of times they'll talk about that it's, its form of a trumpet represents, you know, Gabriel's announcing of this great mystery of the incarnation. Um, there are, uh, was it, uh, who was it? St. Bernard. So St. Bernard talks about, he says that um, the violet was her, the flower of the violet was her humility and uh, the lily of her chastity and the rose, the rose represented her purity. And so he, he begins to like label these different parts of, of uh, Mary and her virtues with flowers. But chastity always being connected to the lily. Now there's one of these old uh, legends and it talks about um, how that the, this Catholic was uh, discussing with this Jewish person. And they were talking about the, the perpetual virginity of Mary. And in this perpetual virginity, uh, they said, in talking about it, there was a pot in front of them. And the Jew said, well, I'll believe that when a lily pops out of this pot. And they said, in, in that moment, this lily, beautiful lily sprang up, beautiful as ever, perfect. And... Uh, in that moment, the person became baptized and became a, a pious Catholic at that point. Um, now, it's, it's kind of an ancient legend, but we actually see this pictured in different um, pieces of art, especially in the, in the Middle Ages. So you'll see this little pot, especially in the Annunciation, because also when Mary kind of challenges the angel and says, how can this be? This kind of tension between in, in belief. And you'll see this pot with a lily always coming out between kind of Mary and the angel Gabriel. Um, now, the Easter lily, when you move over into the Easter lily, that's it's kind of a, a different... It has a legend attached to it, too. They say that after Jesus came out um, of the tomb and afterwards when they went back and investigated the Garden of Gethsemane, that the places where his bloody uh, tears and sweat had dropped in the place of agony, that lilies had sprung up. And so oftentimes you'll hear this, um, the white-robed apostles of hope is what the lilies are called. Um, so where that comes from, there you go. But it was, wasn't really until the 1900s that 
you begin to connect lilies with the resurrection. That's really a, a more recent custom, uh, supposedly, as you read the histories. Uh, and then they use, the, of course, we spiritualize everything. You know, the lilies, they're kind of closed in this tomb-like piece, and so it's like Christ in the tomb, and then it bursts forward, uh, and you have this kind of opening and, and glory as they show out, and you have uh, the white, and again, we spiritualize the white and the purity of Christ and all these different pieces being open to new life, and the gold of, of his kingship, and, and you know, the trumpet as well, hearkening back to Gabriel's announcing of rebirth. And, I mean, you, you can go on and on and talk about the, the lilies part, how they fall to the ground, and then in the next season they are rebirthed into this new uh, creation. So anyway, but this is kind of a, a new piece, but it is what we use now. The Easter lily is what, what uh, we put out in place now. So there you go. It's a little bit of the color changes that we use. Uh, and you see come out in Easter, a little bit of pious legends about lilies, how they really weren't in back in the day, really always connected to the resurrections, more of a recent, but they were always connected uh, to Mary in different ways. So there's your little tidbit for Catholic Jeopardy today. And we'll see you tomorrow to wrap things up at Easter uh, at five o'clock.